flood recovery in Niger State. Farmers affected by last year's disaster receive help in the form of intervention. Mobile money replacing food aid in refugee camps. In Gado, Cameroon, the system gives refugees greater food choices and empowers women. Sometimes necessity is the mother of invention. With the Libyan government unable to pay salaries, these women are starting their own businesses. Africa 54 starts right now. Hello and welcome to Africa 54. I'm Trainbell in Usawa, a channel television here in Lagos. I'm joined by Esa Gisiru Iwas at Voice of America in Washington. Thanks, Chamberlain. I'm Esther Gidu. You are at our global headquarters here in Washington, D.C. Happy to be with you again for another edition of Africa 54. Let's start off with a look at ensuring farm security in Niger State. Chamberlain has that story from Lagos. Well, yes, the National Emergency Management Agency is providing farm inputs to no fewer than 12,000 farmers in Niger State who were affected by the 2018 flood disaster. The beneficiaries are from 15 worst hit local government areas. According to the agency, the intervention is part of efforts to ensure food security in flood prone states, our correspondent Emperor Simon reports. Large expanse of land underwater after torrential rainfall in parts of the country last year. Niger is one of the most affected states houses and farmlands were ruined. The state emergency management agency says more than 40 persons lost their lives and thousands of residents displaced and stripped of their sources of livelihood. Most of the displaced persons are farmers who have eaten up returned to their farms while operating below capacity. The National Emergency Management Agency is providing intervention to the flood victims in form of farm input, such as improved seedlings, agro-ally chemicals, among others. The aim of the intervention is simply, is simply to, probe, to improve the food security. Because as I told you earlier on, this intervention is in two phases. We have the flood impacted state and we have the conflict impacted state across the Federation. All in all, we have 20, 21 states affected by flood and conflict. But only 18 were being affected by flood. But you have a, some states that have the two, the two scenarios. That is the case of the flood and the conflict. Like Benue State is, is addressing the issue of conflict and flood. We have Adama and Borno State too. But like Niger, we are particularly addressing only flood issues. The state government is happy with the intervention, as it will help the farmers recover from their loss and contribute to food production. Most of our people are rural based. And uh, the major activities that we knew here is farming. So whatever affects our farmers affects the government because the burden will be too much in government. So once anything happens to our farmers, the settlement is, is very disturbed. And His Excellency uh, has prepared fully to make sure we support the farmers. There are some programs that is ongoing, but coming to what is happening now again, this will now, will now boost the food agriculture. While appreciating the support, the farmers recount their experience during the flood disaster. We lost many of our farms and uh, products, so that that became difficult for all of us because that is our hope, that is what we expected to take care of our lives. Now that was gone and our hope was dashed for the year. Well, I thank God and I thank the federal government and indeed NEMA for this effort. Uh, of making life uh, more hopeful now. 2018, the disaster of water spoiled our whole domestic crops, such as yams, rice, soya beans, sugar cane, and others. Actually, we really affected on this water damage the rains are here and the fear of flood disaster this year is on the mind of these farmers 
even as they receive interventions from the National Emergency Management Agency. The agency says that apart from providing this intervention, it will continue to engage them in dialogue on the need to imbibe practices that will mitigate flood disaster when it occurs. Emperor Simon, Channel Television News. It's planting season, and all hands on deck will help make food security more achievable. Zanao Hassan is an agronomist and agricultural consultant. He joins us from Abuja Studios to discuss increasing farm yields for small-scale farmers. Welcome to the program. I will start by asking you now, uh, how would you suggest the best way to ensure that the output of small-scale farmers can be increased? Uh, thank you for having me. I think small-scale farmers in Nigeria have been struggling for a very long time now. And one of the ways, or some of the ways that uh, they needed to be assisted in order to increase their yield are uh, categorized in three key areas. One, improved technology. Secondly, uh, improved tools. And then thirdly, the improved techniques. Uh, the technologies we have, especially for seeds, majority of farmers still use unimproved seeds or seeds that have been recycled over a period of time. And this has been challenging. Also, uh, technologies for weed control, for pest control challenges that farmers face here and there. Uh, secondly, our tools, farmers still use hoe. As long as you continue to use hoe, their labor costs will continue to increase. Uh, so we need to uh, mechanize. Thirdly, uh, the techniques, and this involves the method of production, the information they get to be able to enhance, which is in agriculture we call cultural extension. As long as smallholder farmers don't have access to agricultural extension, then that is a very big challenge. Now, clearly, quite a number of challenges that they need to address. If you were to draw a scale of preference of thought, which would be top priority that if addressed, could jumpstart the entire process? Yes, first, um, no matter what farmers need to produce, because these farmers also need to feed their families. So whether they make profit or not, they will continue to produce. So at the, uh, at the first, we uh, farmers need to be supported with the input. Um, in input, it also involves financing. So financing uh, avenues uh, from government need to also be looked at either from the CBN and Cobra program or for, from banks or microfinance banks uh, that need to finance this, these farmers. These are key areas. Secondly is extension. Farmers need to know how best to apply fertilizers, how best to be able to maximize production by planting very well. These are key areas. All right, let, let, let me look at this uh, scenario. For areas like Niger State, where flood washed away crops and removed nutrients from the soil, what methods or techniques, if you will, uh, can revitalize the soil to ensure that we get best results as they resume the farming activity? So regard, regarding soil depletion, over the years, Nigerian farmers have been able to find ways of uh, replenishing their soils. And one of these ways is they use farmyard manure. Some use um, uh, organic waste that have been composted already. They pack them from their um, dust bins or whatsoever and then take them to the farm and also spread them and then also incorporate them uh, on the farm. This helps in increasing the nutrient level of the soil, the soil organic matter, so improving soil aeration uh, and, the, and the likes. And then to, uh, to add to that also is adequate fertilizer. Fertilizer that is at the adequate ratio that can be applied right on time at the right rate and then also at the right timing. These are areas to be able to help in replenishing the lost nutrients uh, from the soil. Well, I, I suppose that can also increase and improve the nutritional value of crops. But let me ask you just one more. Uh, what should be the focus areas for better informed policies that are tailored to responding to the challenges of food production? Yes, yeah, so in order to be able to increase food production, I think government should look at uh, some key areas. 
And when I talk about input supply, I talk about uh, seed fertilizer, pesticide, and secondly, um, tractorization, that's the farm mechanization. As long as the cost of input, the cost of mechanization is very high, it is to the disadvantage of the Nigerian farmer because he produces at a higher cost and then he is forced to sell at a very low, low, low price. This doesn't make sense to any businessman to be able to meet up with the production costs um, so as to be able to ensure that these farmers are profitable. Government need to make those policies. All right, then, now, Zanel Hassan, thank you for joining us today on Africa 54. Thank you for having me. We want to know what you think about Africa 54 and the stories we cover. Join the discussion on Facebook. The address is Africa 54 and check out our headlines 24-7 on voaafrica.com. Coming up, setting an example for Ebola preparedness, Uganda gains praise from the World Health Organization.